And that episode of Sharp replaces our advertised programme, The One That Got Away. You're watching Channel 3 Northeast. Now relationships old and new in Coronation Street. Coronation Street is sponsored by Cadbury, the nation's favourite. The minutes ain't gonna make any difference. Sit down, Sal. Look, what's the point in me selling my share of the garage to Natalie? I've told you. Look, I am the garage. Without me, there's not a business to sell. I like being my own boss. If it weren't for someone else, I'd have to dance to their tune. Go in early, get home later. I'd be cutting my nose off to spite my face. But it's not about that. I know what it's about. It's about trust. Look. I want to prove to her how, how much she trusts me. I reckon if we give her time, she'll get bored. She's had time. We might have even raised the money to buy it ourselves then. How? Alone. Remortgage the house, find another investor. I don't know. I might win the lottery. Well, if we do, then I'll give her the garage. But I don't want her to waltz off with what's rightfully ours. Look, are you with me? So, what raves have you got lined up for New Year's Eve? I don't know what I'm doing yet. Oh, of course, I was forgetting. You'll be stopping in, babysitting. That's it. No, one of the nights having a party. Angling for an invite, are you? My dance card is quite full, as it happens. Police band, bingo, sing song round the piano. Entertainment for the brain dead. Well, play your cards right. You might make Percy on the mistletoe. That's what's worrying me. I might just have to go to the Rovers. Hiya. Hello. All right. What can we do for you? Um, I just thought I'd come and tell you the firm from Hostel. There's a room come up from tomorrow. Oh. They don't hang around, do they? I know. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know you'll have to yourself again. Right, cheers. Right, I'd best go start packing. Should take all the ten minutes. See ya. Yeah, see ya. I'll have to leave it to you to ring me because well, you're not gonna like it. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth then. Hear what? About the council's decision to bulldoze the red wreck. Don't talk ridiculous. And build a mini version of the Sydney Opera House upon it. Is that true? <laughs> Where have you heard this? In the pub last night, Martin told me. He said a little bird told him. Look, my lady's under the dryer there now. I must get back. Audrey. So it is true, then. What's that you're reading? Weatherfield Gazette. Well, today's paper's here. I, I know, I'm just checking. There's no mention of a bandstand here. Concert bowl. Well, there wouldn't be if it's as top secret as Toya claims. Then again, she could have made the whole thing up. Well, it's a pretty complicated plan for a 15-year-old. She's not the brightest star in heaven. Mm hmm <laughs> What am I saying? Complicated. Well, the Weatherfield Concert Bowl. They must have been on acid when they thought that up. So what if I use your phone? You promised me faithfully you wouldn't say anything to anybody. I didn't, broadcast it. It just slipped out. We spend months, years, talking about projects. We get the best PR in the district on the case, and what do you do? You blab it out of your umpteenth gin and tonic to the nearest person who's passing. Alfie, Alfie, chill out, love. Chill out? Do you have this blue shirt put in the wash, John? Uh, just a sec. I'm, I'm on a call here, dear. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear the phone go. Oh. No, no, I'm not happy about it. Or would you be? Oh, well, yeah, if you're holding a gun to my head. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I appreciate that, Steve, but, I mean, it, it's New Year, for heaven's sake. Who is that? Is it Steve Cabal? <sighs> Don't tell me he's got your work in New Year's Eve. Let me speak to him. But, Deirdre... This is ridiculous. 
John! What the hell do you think you're playing at? I'm giving him a piece of my mind. You're trying to get me the sack, more like. Was he telling you you had to work on New Year's Eve? Why didn't you tell him he could stick it? we got plans, remember? Yes, I know we have. Bill Murphy's called in sick. What am I supposed to do? You could try standing up for yourself for once. You could try reminding him that you worked all over Christmas, Christmas Day, for God's sake, and you deserve a bit of a rest. And if you can't bring yourself to tell him, then I'm more than happy to do it for you. I'll handle things my way, thanks. But you won't, though. You'll just roll over and play dead. Oh, rubbish. Says a lot for our future, doesn't it, John? If you haven't got the guts to spend the first night of the year with me. And that says a lot for your faith in me, three weeks before our wedding. You surprised me. Yeah, well, I only wish you'd surprise me sometimes. It's money. Taxpayers' money. Why weren't people consulted at grassroots level? Toya, will you check them sausages for table four? Why? Well, because the poor chap's been waiting. Oh, because they counted on people's apathy, and they probably counted right. I mean, ordinary folk aren't interested in global issues. We'll see. Oh. Let's ask the man himself, Mr. Millennium. Mr. Roberts. Hang on a minute, let's look at the menu first. Mr. Roberts, we've been hearing rumours. Oh, yeah. About the plans for the Millennium? They say you're going to knock down trees to build a bandstand. Are you prepared to comment? Well, since you're asking, the Weatherfield Concert Bowl will bring this town into the 21st century. Oh, by destroying one of its few areas of natural beauty? Not destroying, enhancing. Built by the people, for the people. It'll attract all the top artists in the country. Like who? Like the Spice Girls. You're going to bring the Spice Girls to Weatherfield for the millennium? Well, no, not exactly, no, no. No, but the world is our oyster. You can quote me on that. Good, because the Gazette are keen on an article, possibly a campaign. Council pulls red card on red wreck. Locals cry foul. How do you feel about that, councillor? He seems to think everything's going to change. Well, it will, won't it? He seems to think he can just click his fingers and I'll give up my stake in the garage just like that. Well, it would make life a lot easier. Not for me, it wouldn't. Anyway, I put him straight. I told him to get his finger out and get things back to normal. Not on my account, I hope. Chris, I thought you liked your job. Look, I don't want to spend my days working with a guy who hates my guts, I told you. Yeah, but... Yeah, but nothing. I don't blame Kevin for sacking me. I'd have probably done the same. He acted like a hypocrite. Unlike you. All this fuss about me losing my job. You're not doing it on principle. You just want someone on your side. I felt humiliated. I mean, I was disappointed, of course, but what really got me was the thought of telling people I'm taking second place to his job again. Tell her no. You don't have to put an advert in paper. No, but you know what I mean. What do you reckon? Am I making a mountain out of a mall, though? I think you're being very tolerant, Deirdre. But? Go on, what are you going to say? Don't take this the wrong way. Oh, I don't like the sound of this. Have you ever thought that he might not be working? Hey? Do you think he might have another woman on the go? <coughs> What's so funny? I thought he might belt me for saying that. I'd know. Oh, well, that's what they all say. I've been there, remember? I know what it's like to have somebody lie to you. I know what it's like to lie, come to think of it. I'm not saying I believe it. It crossed my mind, that's all. Not John. He's too straight. He might be a workaholic and a spineless one at that, but he's no philanderer. I don't think he's got the imagination. <laughs> a staggering 50 million pounds on accommodation alone. Yet some people don't even seem to have noticed. Coffee, darling. Darling. You should see what's happened at Butlins. Each clown is given a control hit of real oranges. Of course, we are careful not to harm any of them. Run, you large, slow clowns! Yes! Yes! Most are retrained as estate agents. In five years' time, you'll be buying a house from one of these pointless little men.
All over Britain, more people will be able to save in the double discount sale. From today, including New Year's Day at DFS. Not only is everything reduced, everything's free for a year, too. Take three years free credit and pay nothing for the first year. We're even doubling the sale discount on many items. This set is only 495. This set is only 399. Sale prices, double discount, three years free credit, and everything free for a year. From today, including New Year's Day at DFS. Can we help? A thousand thank yous. Please do me the honor of visiting my humble home. His humble home? <laughs> my home is yours. My attendants will see to your every wish. This is unbelievable. I don't care what it takes. I want them for my wives. I thought you just met him. <laughs> I want them for my wives. <laughs> In his dreams. If the Sheikh wants them for his wives, the Sheikh has them for his wives. Gone? Was it something I said? Peugeot, the drive of your life. Shocking, man! I couldn't believe what my ears were telling me! You just pay your money for this wicked mobile, and that's it. It's totally manageable. There's no strings or contract thing, so I can express myself when and where I like. No talk, no pay, man. You don't have to do anything again. You buy this phone in a box, then nothing is till infinity. That's my head in. And you buy like a phone card when you want to use it, and then just talk. The pay-as-you-talk phone in a box for a shockingly easy way to own a mobile phone. The word is Vodafone. Direct difference to your holiday. Carling Premier. In a world that's losing its head, a lager that doesn't. I've just been to that journo from the Gazette. He's interested in this story. Oh, what? <laughs> My life story? The Red Wreck. You said... I said, yeah. But they wouldn't have touched us with a barge pole without confirmation. Now we've had it, it's all systems go. So all that stuff about the headline? Little white lie time. Sorry. So, if he's interested in interviewing locals, can I count you in? <laughs> Too right. <laughs> Do you think we'll want photographs? Afternoon. Do you want? Oh, nice welcome. So, any more about selling? No. Nope. All right then. How do you fancy buying my share? Not interested. Not possible. Not a good business move on my behalf. So, you do admit then you couldn't run the place without me? <sighs> Mechanics are ten a penny, Kevin. But I prefer the setup the way it is. I just want you to know that you can't walk all over me. You and Tony only got this garage because I bailed you out. So what are you after? I'm after a return to the status quo. It's as simple as that. This place worked well before and it can work well again. I can handle it. Or is it Sally that can't? No, Sally's cool. There's no problem on that score. Good. Then it's business as usual. I'll take the books. I want to double check the figures before the VAT returns go in. Can't stay away, can you? Yeah, I thought I'd better stock up. I'm gonna have enough to do tomorrow without wanting around for shops and all. No, I suppose. Can you reach us down a packet of them nappies? So you old pack then? Near enough. Took a bit longer than ten minutes, if I'm honest. This one doesn't know the meaning of travelling light. I'll get this. No. I mean it. I'm going away present like. No, Ashley, you've done enough. What time will you be back tonight? About six ish, well. Just wondered. Right, see you later. See ya. She's finally going. Well done, lad. This calls for a celebratory cup of tea. Will you join yourself? No, I've got to get back for the girls. Oh, never mind. One fifty. Right. Tap. See ya. 
Uh, could you open a packet of biscuits while you're out there? We'll push the boat out. Don't tell me you're at it and all. Hey? Forgetting what you come in for. You must be putting some of it in water. You could be right, yeah. Afternoon, Mrs Grimes. Um, I wondered, has that soya milk come in yet? We ordered it specially. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Packet oh. of indigestion tablets, please, love. There's a cue, Mr Roberts. Hey, no guessing who that's for. You want to keep that hippy dippy nephew who goes under control? I beg your pardon? He's played havoc with my digestion today. Poking his nose in, threatening me with the, the press. He don't even live around here. He's living with me. And if the council's serious about this concert bowl idea, I think we should all be asking questions. Here, here. Listen, we'll answer questions <laughs> to the locals. Ask this young lad here if he objects to us bringing jobs and entertainment into the area. Keep me out of this. Uh, thank you, Maud. And where will your rent a crowd be at the Millennium? Not in Weatherfield, you can bet. They'll have flitted to some other protest at the taxpayers' expense. So, why didn't you ask the taxpayers what they wanted? 69p, please. They may stop the pain in your gut, but they won't stop you from being a pain Stay up. You and your cronies on the council. <coughs> oh, hi. I was expecting Julie with the girls. How are you? How was Christmas and everything? Fine. Right. You know Kevin's back. I heard. We thought it would be best all round, really. I was just wondering, are we still mates? <sighs> Chris, of course we are. Good. I was going to say any chance of a coffee, but uh, some other time, maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. Hi. There's no tea on. I wasn't expecting you yet. I left early. I'm honoured. What you said this morning, it's been playing on my mind. I said a lot of things this morning. About me being gutless. Did you mean it? Yes, I did, actually. Could we talk about this? Oh, we did talk about it this morning. You just went away and ignored everything I said. No, actually. Well, did you tell Steve Capel that you wouldn't be working on New Year's Eve? No. Well, there you go, then. It's not as simple as that. I'm working for you as much as for myself. I'm trying to guarantee us a good future together. What makes you think we've got a future? What do you mean? Well, if you haven't even got time to enjoy the present. I'll make it up to you. When? Next New Year's Eve? Oh, John. I'm not trying to stick the knife in. It's my pride that's hurt more than anything. Something Liz said this afternoon. What? Well, she said maybe you weren't working all the hours God sends. Maybe you were seeing another woman. What? Well, if she thinks that and she's our friend, what's everyone else thinking? I'm going to go and start the tea. Anybody home? In here. It's a good job you weren't much longer. It would have been ruined. What? Sit down. Other side. What's this? Open it. Oh, when did you do this? This afternoon. She screamed red off when I stuck her hand in paint. Oh, God, the stay. Do you need them? Uh, no, sit down. You like it well done, don't you? You know me. Put an elephant on my plate and I'll eat it. Oh, jeepers. It is an elephant. Don't be daft. Cheers. Pop 
popped into your Uncle Fred's this afternoon. He told me what to do, wrote it all down for me times and everything. I've never been much good at cooking. This is brilliant. Well, it's just to say thanks for everything in that. Well, here's to peace and quiet. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's not funny, you know, John. No, 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 it's not. Well, then take that smirk off your face. You don't really believe it, do you? What, that you've got another woman? No. There is another reason why I work so hard, you know. It's, um, it's because I'm trying to prove myself to you. Prove what? After that business, not telling you I was a pilot, I always got the feeling that you were, you were disappointed. Wished I'd made more of myself. No! Look, I, I don't care what job you do. I want to be a success. I want to get to senior management level. But why, if it's going to come between us? Well, the pressure eases off a bit then. You can work from home more and be your own boss. I see. I got the sniff of a vacancy in the spring, working alongside Steve Capel. I didn't say anything because I didn't want you to get your hopes up. Look, I've told you, as long as it makes you happy, I don't care what you do. It would be great for us. I could have an office at home. You could slow down at Sunliners, maybe even go part-time if you wanted. We'd have as much time together as we liked. See, that's, that's why I have to keep well in at work. Am I ever going to win an argument with you? <laughs> oh, and whatever the lady wants, a double. Full of the joys, aren't you? Would you rather see my Scrooge impression? Cancel that order, landlady. Uh, no, no, it's very pleasant. All right, go on then, and whatever you're having. Uh, yeah, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm just wondering how you're doing. You've been burnt out, nearly bankrupt. And look at you. If you felt like you know, you'd still come up smelling of roses. Yes, I would. What's your secret? Have you heard of the Michael Vernon Baldwin two-point plan? One, a bit of luck. Two, plain old hard graft. That's where I'm going wrong. Too much number two, not enough number one. <laughs> we should be thinking long term. Uh, there is flora and fauna to be considered. The hoary groundwort. You've just made that up. Oh, you're showing your ignorance, Curly. Oh. You've heard of it then. Well, who hasn't? Hey, Vera? Hola. So you never made it into the Boy Scouts then, Curly? Uh, ten out of ten for intuition. Whereas you can tell just by looking at Roy that here is a man who knows 50 different ways to tie a knot. Yeah, I bet you can light a fire with twigs, can't you? As it happens... Do you know, it... I've always wanted to do that. Well, my memories of the scout troop are not uniformly happy. Hey, don't tell me I had trouble with you, what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with this place? Mm, work for Vera? Mm. No time. I think I've had enough of pubs full stop. Ah, you'd rather be this side of the bar, eh? Can't say I blame you. So then, why don't you work for me? For what? At the factory. I've got a vacancy, you can have it. I'm not a machinist. <laughs> so what? I've no experience, I'd be too slow. You can thread a needle, can't you? Yeah. And you got used to your feet, no uh, arthritis or rheumatism or anything? No. And you can hold your own with a group of gossiping harpies, can't you? Oh, I've had enough practice. Ah, well, that's it then. Start Monday. Like, why are you doing this? Why me? I don't know. Uh, maybe... Hey, maybe that's where you're going wrong. Too many questions. When a bit of luck comes my way, I grab it and run. I don't hang around and say, well, why me? Rather, neither will I. I'll see you Monday. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Here, tonic water. Found it in back at cupboard. You didn't have to eat it all, you know. I've always been the same. My mum always used to say my eyes are too big for me, Billy. Any better? A little bit. Because I'll have to throw you over my shoulder and rub your back if you're not. I've never lived on my own before. Me neither. Be weird, won't it? You'll still visit, though, won't you? Bring Shannon. Well, it's probably best if you come to us, you know, Judy and that. Don't expect a date, though. I won't. Ashley, thanks for putting us up. You didn't deserve all the stick you got. All stick? And I hope you sort things out with Maxine and that. Mm -hmm. I hope so. That's my fault and all. No, it's not, it's hers. 
you don't have to go. All day I've been thinking about you. No visitors, doors locked at nine o'clock. You and Shannon sharing a bathroom with strangers, it's not right. I've been dreading going. Well, let someone else have the room. Give it to some girl that really needs it. You can stop here till you find a place your own. What about your Uncle Fred? I'll pay rent, it's up to me. They've got Lou and Maxime especially. If we get back, it's got to be on my terms. The jealousy's got to stop. So what do you say? If you shall. Right then. She had a bad dream. It's good enough again now. She didn't wake Rosie up though. Mind you, take all the cane to wake her, won't it? You okay? No, not really. Why? What is it? I saw you this afternoon with her. It all looks so normal. It's just business. She just turned up, nothing happened. I was kidding myself, Kevin. I can't handle the two of you working together. Nothing happened. I told you we've talked shop, talked VAT, end of story. It eats me up inside. I've been on pins all afternoon waiting for you to ring me, saying you're going to be working late again or something. It's over, I've told you. Yeah, well, I know that in here. But in here, I can't believe it. I trust you, honestly, I do. But I don't trust her. Look, I've been doing some calculations, and even if we sold you a share at a loss, we'd still have a lump sum to fall back on. Buttons. That's all it'd be. Well, I could go full-time at the factory. Maybe I'll ask Mike if I can have some overtime. We'd scrape by, even if it did take you a few months to get another job. All right. So who am I supposed to sell it to? She hasn't got the money. I've asked her. They're not exactly queuing round the block. Well, then dump it, whatever. Just get rid of it. Because I would rather starve in a gutter than go through all that strain again. Sally, you're not thinking well, straight. Well, maybe not, but I can't help the way I feel, can I? Well, I hate to say this, Kevin, but you owe me. Status Quo and Wayne Dobson are among the guests on the Freddy Star Show, next. Sponsored by Cadbury, the nation's favourite. 